on CJAD 800. Hi there, and now for something completely different. We're going to talk a little bit about families and kids and interpersonal relations inside the family with my next guest, who is a geneticist by training, but she's written a series of short stories which have been published in all kinds of uh, venues and they have been put to, pulled together in a really lovely little edition um, published by Exile Editions. It's called The Meaning of Children, and my guest is Beverly Ackerman of Western NDG. Hi That's, there. Hi. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. No, it's really nice to have you in studio, and I, I thought, you know, this is the perfect way to address the phenomenon known as Mother's Day, which is a week from tomorrow, <laughs> right? And you're a yes, mom yourself. Is. I am a mom. Okay, Absolutely. and you've got these three kids uh, raging in age from 25 to 16. Yes, still in the middle of some of it, yes. The teen, the teen <laughs> thing is pretty interesting. Yes, well, my youngest is a girl, so it's, I think, very different from the boys. And um, I used to be brilliant, and now I'm quite stupid, apparently. But <laughs> I think I will get smarter as time goes on, so there is a light at the end of the tunnel. No, it's true, eh? It's funny how you go, you know, your kids can't get enough of you. Yeah. And then they're like, uh, can you leave now, Mom? I, I, I'm going to go by myself, like, into the schoolyard. And then... Yep. Uh, then you become really backward and irrelevant, and then maybe there's some kind of equilibrium yeah. later. When you does get that e smarter. When, when does the equilibrium happen? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I guess around 17, 18. Oh. <laughs> maybe 19. That's 20, so sad because my daughter is only 10. <laughs> it depends on the kid. I guess so. Yeah. So what? What? So you've written these stories over a number of years, right? There's, when did you start writing these stories? I quit working in science the end of 2003, and okay. I started taking, I guess, some writing workshops in 2004 and five. My first story was published in 2006, so okay. basically I've been writing since then. And had you been writing sort of off and on all along before that? No, no. I, I always wanted to write, but, you know, I didn't really think I could earn a living at it. I didn't take myself seriously, I guess that's what it was. And uh, also I was, you know, a committed feminist and uh, I was very good in sciences and math and so I, I, I was interested in genetics so I, you know, I went ahead and, and I got a master's, a bachelor's and a master's degree at McGill and I worked at the Montreal Children's Hospital off uh, for a long time with uh, Charles Scriver and his laboratory in biochemical genetics and uh, a number of other labs affiliated with McGill and uh, finally I, um, my father-in-law died actually in 2003 and uh, plunged me into a bit of a crisis because I sort of suddenly realized that time was passing and if you have things that you always wanted to do that maybe it was time to start doing them. Hmm, so interesting. That's, that's what I did. Yeah. yeah, I think that that rings a bell with a lot of people. Yeah. You think that you're going to go on doing whatever it is you're doing forever. Not so, really not so. Sometimes it takes a, a trauma or a, yeah. a tragic event like that to sort of wake you up to that it, reality. It's a wake up that, you know, time isn't infinite and that you really have to love what you do. And that sometimes that the situation you set up for yourself 20 years ago, you, you know, you change over time. And uh, I'd sort of forgotten it was a choice that I was working in science, you know, mm. you're working full time and you have uh, three kids and a husband who travels quite a lot. Um, you know, you're just sort of plowing through, trying to make your way through the snowstorm. And mm. uh, I think when my father-in-law died, it sort of made me pick up my head and say, how do you want to spend the rest of your life like this? And I thought, thought no, I, I always wanted to write, so I'm going to try it. Well, you're a brave woman. And after the break <laughs> that's coming up, we're going to talk a little bit about the substance of some of the stories in this new book by Beverly Ackerman called The Meaning of Children. It's a book of, so of short stories, 14 short stories. Um, and it's not necessarily sort of uh, with rose-colored glasses. I, I read a number of the stories and thought, yep, that's sort of how it plays out. And it's not so simple. And I, so it's kind of, a, in a sense, it's sort of an antidote to the commercialized side of Mother's Day, which is coming up a week from now. And it would make a great Mother's Day gift, if I may say so myself. Oh, Beverly Ackerman do. didn't say it, but I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be back with Beverly Ackerman after this break. CJD time is 2.15. <laughs> My guest is Beverly Ackerman of Montreal. She is an author of short stories which have been put together in a very attractive uh, book published by Exile Editions called The Meaning of Children. A number of the stories in the collection have won awards. And uh, I'm just reading here now from a, a little script that you wrote that's on your website, I think, Beverly Ackerman. After two decades in molecular mm -hmm. genetics research, I realized I've been learning more and more about less and less. And then you say you're the only Canadian fiction writer ever to have sequenced your own DNA. Is that true? 
Well, I, I like to believe I am. <laughs> I, I haven't done an extensive sur survey, but I imagine that I am. I, I can't think of any other Canadian fiction writers who were DNA sequencers. But No, you know, I can't I could either. Be wrong. That's why I made it very specific. Are you gonna, do you ever think you might write about the life of a person who is a genetics researcher and what, what that tells you about yourself and about the people around you? Yeah, I think I will eventually write more about what it was like in science. I haven't written that much about it, and uh, I think the first piece will be called DNA Isolation. And oh, cool. Because I'm thinking of Barbara, uh, Margaret Atwood's uh, Life Before Man, in which she describes life in a museum doing mm -hmm. research on dinosaurs and paleontology. And then there's Vincent Lamb, who won a, won a booker about medicine, short yeah. stories about being a doctor. Killer, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, Killer, yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So. yeah so anyway, so but, so you're writing really about the family separate from career and workplace pretty much, right? You're, and a lot of your stories are written from the point of view of the kids. The first, yeah, the book is divided up into three sections. The beginning is first-person point of view uh, children stories. The middle is uh, people in the childbearing years. And the end is people who are older uh, or stories that take the long view of life. So. Mm -hmm. And there's a terrible story about a woman who discovers her husband <sighs> in front of a computer. Yeah. Can we say? Yeah, sure. <laughs> He's died, and she finds him. I mean, I, you know, I've, it's, so pl it's so plausible. It has such a ring of truth to it, so many of the stories, it seems to me. People will recognize them when they read. They'll recognize the scenes that you've described and the emotions that go with them. And I especially like the first section because the world according to the way that the kids see the world is so rarely described, right, in terms of the yeah. family. Yeah, and you know things happen, and they stuck in my mind, and I tried to puzzle them through, and that's what some of these stories are about. You know, things that I've experienced or that I know have happened, and mm. uh, you know, the things we've forgotten about what it's like to be a child. I think, mm. and, it can and not understand the world around us completely, and the adults assuming that you do understand, yeah. or, or just wondering why you don't seem to get it, or the the adults just you know going on their merry adult way and not even recognizing the impact sometimes that they're having, their arguments are having on the children. Or, or their decisions. Know, yeah. yeah. Decisions. So did you want to read us just a brief excerpt? For um, sure. Okay, I'm going to read, uh, I think this is the third story. It's called Broken. It's from a child's point of view. Um, when you're a kid, one of the things you understand best is that about most things, you understand almost nothing at all. But by the start of my 11th summer, one thing I had figured out was that when people lowered their voices, it was usually because they were talking about sex. I first made this association because of Audrey, who lived two doors over with her parents and her two little sisters, all of them strawberry blondes. Her sisters were so cute, Amy, two years old, and Alice, almost one. Irish twins, my mother called them, which was weird because they went to synagogue with us, and I knew for a fact that no one in their family had ever set even one foot in Ireland. <laughs> and an Irish twin, I only recently learned what that was. That's when the babies are extremely close together. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like in my family, there are a couple of, well, they're actual twins who are Irish twins. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, this happens in all kinds of families. But um, what are, what were you, who are you hoping will read these stories? Um, well, I think this is for any book. I'm hoping this book is for anyone who's uh, been a child, <laughs> wanted a child, and had a child. But um, I think it's mostly uh, for women. Um, I mean, it's about parenthood. Most of the stories are told about girls or women. I think I have only one story where the main character is a man. Um, I just think uh, I'm trying to honor the, the parts of, of women's lives that we don't pay enough uh, attention to sometimes. I think as a, growing up as a feminist in the 60s and the 70s, I think we, we sort of didn't have enough respect for traditional women's occupations. We were so keen on getting out there into the workplace that had been denied us for generations that we, we sort of, I think, bought into the idea that teaching and uh, and uh, nursing and mothering and caregiving are uh, lesser occupations. And of course, they aren't. And they're very, very important uh, to all of us, uh, especially we notice as we age and we become more dependent on, on, on caregivers. So I just am hoping partly to honor that you know, in, in women's lives. I think it's important. In time for Mother's Day. So <laughs> if you are casting about for the perfect Mother's Day gift, this might be it. it. The book is called The Meaning of Children by Montreal author Beverly Ackerman. 
and it's a collection of 14 short stories which sort of cover the range of experience from the point of view of children, mums, and I guess also aging yes. parents as well. So, I, you know, it's all there in this lovely little book. So um, we're going to come back and finish off this segment with Beverly Ackerman after this break. CJD time is 2.24. Hi, and welcome back to the program. My guest is Beverly Ackerman, author of a new sto- a series of short stories. Well, not so new, actually. There's the new package they're in is called The Meaning of Children. And uh, they're short stories about life in a family that might just resemble yours. And they're not really based in any particular... Well, you do make a lot of Montreal references, actually, in the, some of the stories. Yes, yes. I mean, I would say most of them are very clearly rooted in Montreal. And it's very fun to read stories based and rooted in Montreal. Well, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, and and there's a, lots of references to the Jewish community and family issue practices right. and stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, my publisher wasn't so keen, actually, on me. Uh, so it doesn't say anywhere on the outside of the book that I'm a Montreal author. He didn't want me to get pigeonholed. And, you know, I guess a huge part of the market is around Toronto, and you don't want to say that you're a Montreal writer. I don't Except know. That I'm there's... not sure they're... Tens yeah. of thousands of Montrealers, expats, expats all around, all around. I'm, I, I'm sure everybody who's listening knows at least one or two. <laughs> we have many more than expatriated that. Expatriated Montrealers in the Toronto area. I mean, there's even a bagel place that's open yeah. to sort of cater yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's literary fiction, which sort of means you should be able to feel that it could take place anywhere in a way and uh, to, just that it touches you. Mm, mm, mm. And what what's your sense of how um, your feminism has colored the cont- the, the the stories? Um, well, I think it definitely has colored the stories. There's a story about abortion, and um, uh, I'm a strong f- feminist and uh, and pro choice feminist. Pro- yeah, I'm a pro choice feminist. It's a very hard decision for a lot of people. Um, but I'm I'm still glad that it's a decision that that is ours to make and not uh, some external group uh, trying to run our lives. It's funny would... how conservatives sort of seem to cleave to the idea that you're supposed to be responsible for your own life, and yet they they're trying you know they may try to restrict uh, freedom of choice on that issue and not let you decide about your own life. But I thought that was a very brave story actually that you wrote because I think you're writing about something that a lot of people have experienced but still feel very uh, badly about talking about. It's not it's not out there in yeah. the civil in the civil discourse or in the public discussions of no, what family life is about. I don't think people feel comfortable uh, acknowledging that they have had an abortion or that they're you know they're related to someone who has. It's still a, a, a private, very private family matter. I was thinking about doing a collection of, of fiction, maybe fiction and nonfiction, on that subject too. Hmm. Editing a collection like that, but it's, that's in the back of my mind because it's an important subject. I mean, we're very, very lucky to have grown up in the era in which we have, uh, where we do have so many more options than our mothers and grandmothers had. And we have to protect those options for, you know, the future generations. I think that's very important, too. What will you be doing on Mother's Day? Um, I guess going to brunch with my parents. <laughs> I'm lucky enough to have both my parents, so um, I'm getting, getting cards and kisses from my kids. Oh, and flowers, yeah. hopefully. That's always a nice feature <laughs> of Mother's Day. But really, Mother's Day should be our, each of our respective birthdays in some sense. You were saying that was the opinion of some family member. Of my yours. father-in-law, my father-in-law thought, on your birthday, you really should go and honor your mother because she went through so much. <laughs> and he would know he put his parents through a lot. Mm, well, so. we all do. It's really... Anyway, yes, I, I, do. I wanted to congratulate you okay. on the publication of this book, and I hope it goes far, far afield for you. Thank you very, very much. I hope people enjoy it. Beverly Ackerman, author of the short stories In the Meaning of Children. You can pick it up at uh, almost any local bookstore. And it's a wonderful gift for Mother's Day. Um, possibly longer lived than uh, the usual cut flowers. Uh, so, <laughs> and thanks very much for coming all the way into studio. Well, thank you. My nice pleasure. to have you on air. CJD Time, 2.30 time. For-